Hello everyone, this is Daniel Lee Teacher here, and for today's morning prayer, I want to take this time to pray for the year in general. And because if you've been keeping up with the news, especially this week, then you'll know that 2020 hasn't been very kind to a lot of us. 
So a lot of things have been happening from the coronavirus to protests across the country to um, what's been going on in Beirut, Lebanon. Like they had a huge explosion that killed hundreds and left thousands homeless. And it all happened because some people just didn't know where to store certain things. And it, see, it might seem hard to stay positive, especially with what's been going on this year in, in general. But it's important that we continue to try. Like we all know that God is with us when we need him most. And this year, a lot of people really need God. So let's just take this time to pray for everyone and just pray that God continues to be a light in everyone's lives, especially as we continue this year. So let's just bow our heads and close our eyes. And I will pray for us. So God, we just thank you for this day and just thank you for gathering us all here today and just keeping us all safe. Just pray that you continue to be with our be with us as we continue to move through the year. And I just pray that you be with the people of Beirut and Lebanon, Lord. And just be a light in their lives, Lord, as they look to you for help, Lord. Comfort, Lord. Especially with what's what happened there, Lord. We just pray that you just continue to give us all a cheerful heart so that we can cheerfully praise your name even when this year gets dark, Lord. Just thank you for this day and just in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'm Pastor Mike and you're tuning in to Jam's Sunday service at Thanksgiving Church. Please turn with me to your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 25 verses 23 all the way down to 34. Now there are quite a few verses, so please follow along carefully as I read. That's Genesis chapter 25, verses 23 to 34. Let's begin. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew, I am famished. And that is why he was also called Edom. And Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. Look. I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. And the people of God say, amen. All right, so today we are moving on to Jacob, the third patriarch of the Bible. Jacob is a man of many stories. And personally, I believe that most every Christian can relate to at least several of them. His stories reflect the condition of the human heart really well. So without further ado, let's take it from the top with a well-known Jacob story. So this is how the story goes. Isaac's wife, Rebecca, was unable to have children. So he prays to God on her behalf. And God grants her not one, but two. Twins. God tells Rebecca that the older would end up serving the younger, which is an odd detail to include uh, given the times because there was definitely uh, uh, a culture where the first and oldest child was favored over the others. Nonetheless, the first baby is born and he is very hairy. So Isaac and Rebecca named him Esau. Esau means hairy. The second baby comes out and oddly enough, he was, comes out grabbing onto the heel of his older brother. So his parents named him Jacob, which means heel grabber. 
you can definitely tell that back then people tend uh, to name their children based on what they saw uh, right when they were born. Now, uh, during the Old Testament times, calling someone a heel grabber had a very negative meaning. It would be like calling someone a trickster or a rascal or someone who deceives others. And this is something that we will see play out through Jacob's life uh, all throughout his stories. And that's also interesting because Jacob is God's chosen one, right? To have someone named uh, a deceiver uh, in that way. So Esau grows up and he becomes a skilled and strong hunter. And because of this, Isaac, who happens to be a meat lover, grows close to Esau. And Jacob was more of an indoors kind of guy. He liked to read, he liked to cook, and therefore he was closer to his mother, Rebecca. Now, one day, Esau came home from the field and he was very tired and hungry. He followed a sweet smell that was coming from the kitchen and he finds his brother Jacob cooking some stew. And naturally, Esau asks his little brother for a bowl of stew, to which Jacob, remember, he is the schemer, the trickster. Jacob tries to strike a deal. Jacob says, I'll give you some stew only if you sell me your birthright. So Esau agrees and swears an oath to sell his birthright in exchange for this meal. Now, so that's the story. Let's get the first thing out of the way. What is a birthright? Well, it's exactly like it sounds. It's the rights that you get at birth. Esau, being the firstborn child, would uh, selling his birthright would mean that he would, he would be selling his rights for being the oldest child. And this may not feel too important to us today, but back then, the first child was given double the material blessings compared to the other siblings. And there was a great deal of spiritual inheritance that was passed on as well. So it was no small thing to just give away over a bowl of stew. Now, some of you who are paying attention to the story may remember that in the beginning, God said, uh, gave a prophecy and said that the older would serve the younger. So that means God had a plan for this to happen from the very beginning. So he would be right in saying that Jacob never really had to buy what would end up being his. And Esau never had the birthright to sell off in the first place. Now, our natural thought might be to fault Jacob for taking advantage of his brother. Uh, but as Hebrews chapter 12, 16 tells us, the Bible is clear to point out that Esau not taking his birthright seriously and just handing it out was a much bigger fault. And I wanna talk about why that is today. First, I wanna point you to the spiritual interaction, transaction that happened between Jacob and Esau. Esau wanted a bowl of soup. He was seeking something that was physical, something that was material, something that would fill an immediate need namely his hunger. Jacob, on the other hand, was asking for something that was invisible, something that would be valuable later on down the road. We might even say that Esau was concerned with worldly things that he could see with his eyes, and Jacob was concerned with spiritual things that are invisible. Now, the biggest reason the birthright would have been so meaningful is because, I think, of the stories that Isaac, their father, would have passed down to the brothers over the dinner table as they were growing up. Isaac would have told them about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. He would have put a value in these brothers uh, regarding what it means to be children of God, what it means to be faithful to God, and how God has been faithful to this family. So the brothers would have had an understanding of the inheritance to come. So the birthright of the eldest would have been the honor to continue this line of faith. The person with this birthright would even continue in God's covenant, uh, his plan, and would eventually lead down to the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. So clearly, one of the brothers took these stories very seriously. He believed in these stories, even though he may not have understood. And clearly, the other brother 
thought these were fairy tales, hocus pocus, just fun dinner table stories. And the truth is, students, as the children of God, you and I, we have a birthright as well. Just to name a few, in Ephesians chapter 1, it gives us a nice little list. It says, we uh, have the birthright to every spiritual blessing, the blessing of being chosen in Jesus, adopted into God's family, complete acceptance by God in Jesus, redemption from our slavery to sin, true and total forgiveness, the riches of God's grace, the, the knowing of, of the mystery of God's will, and eternal inheritance, the guarantee of the Holy Spirit. And just, wow, these things are amazing, these birthrights that we have, but they are all invisible. They cannot be seen. And here is the hard part. Just like Esau, we often treat this birthright way too lightly. Every time we go to false idols over God, every time we choose momentary satisfaction over following our eternal Lord, it is like selling our, uh, our birthright for a bowl of soup. The good news is that God forgives infinitely. But the bad news is that you and I are not infinite. So we, have, we will run out of time eventually. And this is why God calls you and I to look beyond our physical needs, our immediate needs, and to always look forward into what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do according to his plans. So children, do not lose sight of the Lord because of your immediate troubles. Do not forsake your birthright as children of God, for God is good all the time. So put your hopes and trust in him so that he may give you strength to follow him and pray always that he may keep you dwelling in his promise. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we are but human. We are tempted by uh, the wonderful things of this world that draws our attention. We are led to a whole host of things that draw us away from you. Heavenly Father, we ask you that you give us the faith to look beyond ourselves and to always look to you, that we may put our focus, our goals on eternal things, on the spiritual and visible things of the Lord. We thank you, and all these uh, we pray using the words that you taught us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.